Ciao friends, and welcome to a new unplugged video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to answer a question that appeared on one of the training that we recorded and provide uh, through our video platform. The question is interesting because uh, it requires using three tasks in order to move a filter between two tables. And it all starts from a limitation of a star schema. So I don't want to spend time describing the problem uh, just by talking. I think it's better if we start looking at the question, we investigate on the topic, and then we answer uh, the, the question by writing the code as requested by the user. Let's start. We start from the question. The question is in the data modeling training, and uh, here it is. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay. Amhai says, in a video, if you don't have a star schema, we move all the column of geography to customer and store. Now, the thing is, uh, both the customers and the stores, they have a country, a continent, a state, and a city. And in order to build a proper star schema, you have to move these columns as attributes of the two dimensions. You cannot create one dimension with uh, the geography, you need to denormalize all the attributes in two different dimensions, which makes the entire structure a star schema. But this creates a problem. Let's move further. So the question goes on with, however, if I want to analyze number of customers and stores in a particular geography in a single visual, then this approach doesn't work. The reason is being two different columns in two different tables, you cannot use just one column to filter both the customer and at the same time, the stores. Also, if I create multiple visuals, then it won't perform cross filtering. How do we solve this? And I provided a quick answer that is, well, if that is the case, I would not get rid of the star schema. Instead, I would author measures using three tasks. And uh, as expected, the next question is, uh, well, if I want to identify customers in area where there are no stores, uh, will three tasks work here? And the quick answer is yes, of course, three tasks is going to work. If you need to identify stores or areas uh, where you do not have a store, but still you have customers who are buying your goods, uh, you do not need to change the data model and deviate from a star schema. Just a bit of DAX is going to solve the problem. So with no further ado, let's open the model and let's solve the problem step by step. I have here our usual Contoso model and I'm slicing by country and showing the sales amount as we always do at the beginning of most of our demos. It's important to note here that the country is the country of the customer. You can see here, the column that I'm using is the country in the customer table. Therefore, this is the sales amount bought by customers who live in this specific country. And we can also add the state. Okay, so we have, for example, in Italy, we have the different states and in Canada, same stuff. Now, the filter from the continent does not flow to the customer. Sorry, the filter from the customer does not flow to the store. We can see here, uh, we can actually build a new diagram that makes things easier. We have sales, we have customer, let's place it here, and stores. Now, customer contains uh, the continent, the country, and then the state. And the same is happening with, uh, uh, I'm not sure it was visible, let's start again. So yeah, the customer contains the continent and the country, and at the same time, the store contains uh, the country and somewhere here, the state. So we have two different columns uh, with uh, the country and the state in two different tables. Right now, I'm placing the filter on the customer table, therefore customer filter sales, but then the filter does not go to the store table. We might be tempted to make this relationship bidirectional, but that is not what we are going to do. We keep the relationship as it is, and we start looking at the problem. I'm slicing by country, I'm showing the sales amount. If I build a measure that computes the number of stores, let's do that, 
I build a measure that we call number uh, with a larger font. Okay, number of stores that just does a count rows of store. This measure is not going to be affected by the filter on the on uh, the customer country. If I place it here, you see that it shows 74 everywhere. The reason is that the filter on country does not reach the store. What we want to do is take this selection, Australia, and then Capital Territory or Queensland or Tasmania, and move the filter from the customer columns to the store table. Let me show that again. We have uh, the country and the state somewhere, country and state here, and we, mo we want to take this selection and move it to the store. That's a perfect example where three task works. So let's start changing the code of stores. First, we need to, grab, to create a temporary table that contains uh, the combination of country and state. So we can take the customer territory. And the best function that we can use here is a summarize. The reason why summarize is good is because we want the existing combination of country and state. We could grab only the state, which is the lowest level. But if the same state happens to be in different countries, so that would be a problem. So we just summarize customer by country. a bit smaller and by state now at this point this table contains uh, the territory from the customer table let's create another variable for the result where we place the count rows of store and then we return result now, count rows of store right now is just counting the stores and it's not using the customer territory variable. I could use customer territory as a filter using calculate, count rows of store, and then customer territory. But right now, this is not going to change in any way the result of my calculation because the filter started from customer, from here, and it still works only on customer. I'm counting rows in the store table, so the result of this measure is the same as we had before. And we still have 74 everywhere. What we need to do is move this table, which contains customer column, to a table containing store columns. And the function that does it is treatise. So we can create another variable, store territory, territory, that uses treatise. Let's go on a new line. We take the customer territory table and the three tasks require us to provide a new um, column type for each of the columns in the table. The table contains customer country and customer state and we want, we want to treat these columns as store country and store and store Um, state. So now the result of customer territory is casted to a country and a state in the store table. Therefore, store territory will contain columns in the store, and as such, it filters the store. We replace this customer territory with store territory, and now I should see numbers here changing. Let's reduce the font and we can also get rid of it. Now you see that we see in Australia we have seven store. The filter starts from customer and it reaches the store. And we can already appreciate the fact that in New South Wales we have a sales amount but we do not have any store. And the same happens in Queensland, that is for Australia. Whereas if we look at Germany, same stuff. We have uh, uh, different cities and different region where we have quite large amount of sales but we do not have any stores. Now the numbers here do not look really perfect and the thing is I'm taking into account also the 
store the online sales. So let me get rid of online sales. If I use a filter on the entire report uh, and I filter by store name, you see that we have a lot of different names from the stores and among the many at the bottom, we have the online store. Online store is uh, sales that happen online. So these are not customers that physically go to a store. These are customers that buy online. So we select everything and we get rid of the online store. Now we have a better picture or at least the numbers make a bit more sense. We have countries, sales amount and the number of store. We could use the visual as it is already to identify uh, where we have large amount of sales and no stores. But we could do something different. We can use the same technique to compute the sales amount that happen in stores, uh, that happen in a store and uh, sales that happen to customers that live in the same area and remove and uh, compute also the sales amount of customers that live in an area where there are no stores at all. That gives us an idea of uh, how many customers are buying in a state where they do not have any store. And we have numbers that we can use to perform further reasoning. The technique is very similar. We started from here. You see that we computed the customer territory, the store territory, and then the result using store territory as a filter. We are going to use the same technique, but this time we compute the sales amount. So let's create a new measure. I just copy the code. The new measure will not be number of stores, will be sales with no stores. It is sales made by customers where there are no stores. We start with customer territory that summarizes customer by country and state. Then we use store territory, treating as customer territory as a store country and store state. Now, the thing is that if there are no uh, country or no state, customer territory will lose all the rows where there are no stores. So the next step that we need to do is remove from customer territory the rows that remain in store territory. And we can create a, a ter customer territory with no stores. And we use a function, one of the most interesting functions in DAX, that is accept except removes from a table the rows that are in a second table. So the first table is customer territory and the second table is store territory. So from customer territory, we are removing the rows that are in store territory. Remember, store territory contains uh, the rows in customer territory for which there is actually a store. And then we use this as a filter and instead of computing customer store, we compute sales amount. So that will be the sales amount that happens to customer that live in an area where there are no stores and we return the result. We format it as a decimal number and then we can use it in the report. You see, that is showing us that in New South Wales, this is the amount of sales there are no stores, therefore the entire amount is moved as a sales with no stores. Whereas in Australian Capital Territory, we have a smaller sale amount of sales, there is a store and there is no value in sales with no store. We can use a very similar technique to compute the opposite measure. So to compute the sales that happen in places where there actually is a store. The code is quite similar. So let me copy everything and we build a new measure. And this time we call it sales with stores. 
We compute customer territory, store territory, and instead of computing customer territory with no stores, we compute customer territory with stores. And instead of using except, we just use intersect. So that what remains in customer territory are only the customer territories where actually there is a store. And then we need to change the variable name here. The remaining part of the code is actually the same. Let's format this again. We place the measure here. Now you see that we have uh, the number, the sales amount, which is split among, between the sales with no stores and sales with store. The value goes on one side or the other one, depending on whether there are stores in that area. And that still works uh, at the aggregate level. So here it's very clear to see that uh, there are no stores or there are stores. But when you remove the state, you see that we have a given sales amount. There are seven stores which are placed in different places in Australia. And this is the amount that happened where there are no stores. And this is the amount that happened where there are stores. Finally, you can compute the percentage of sales that happen in stores by simply dividing one by the other. So we can compute percentage of sales in stores by dividing the sales with stores by the sales amount. That is going to provide a percentage, so we need to format it as a percentage, place it in the report, and now it works. That is showing that, let's get rid of the state, that is showing that in Australia we have seven stores and 41% of the sales happen in stores and are sales made by customers that live in the same area of a store. Whereas if we look at Canada, France or Italy, you see that the percentage is much, much smaller. Therefore, this report might be useful in order to understand where it is good to open new stores. If you look at Canada, we have a very large amount of sales, but the number of sales that happen in physical stores by people that live in that area is really, really tiny. Therefore, opening new stores is going to help customer finding uh, the place where they can buy your goods. As you have seen, Tritas is quite powerful. You do not need to deviate from a star schema uh, if what you want to do is move a filter from a table to another one. If you reach the point where your data model contains a star schema, you already have the perfect data model. There is nothing else to do. The model is fine as it is. You do not change anything. And if you need to move a filter between two different dimensions, instead of creating a new table, you use Tritas to move the filter from one table to another. Tritas requires using Formula Engine, but as long as you work with dimensions, uh, the size of this table that need to be uh, moved as filter between uh, two dimensions is quite small and performance is not going to be a problem. Learning these details of DAX let you work with the correct data model, that is a star schema, and author the DAX code the right way in order to compute your values. Enjoy DAX! <laughs>